Information systems play a critical role in just about every organization today. As such, there's a number of roles that have to be filled in these organizations to maintain and to use information systems effectively and efficiently. Not every organization will have a person dedicated to each one of these roles, but most organizations will have somebody that fills this role in one way or another. The first role that we'll look at is the Chief Information Officer. The Chief Information Officer is a job title commonly given to the most senior executive in an enterprise responsible for the information technology and computer systems that support enterprise goals. The top concerns among CIOs are technology alignment with the business, security and privacy, speed of IT delivery and time to market, in other words, how long will it take to actually implement new technologies, keeping up with innovation, business productivity and efficiency, and the value proposition that IT brings to the business. So CIO is concerned with the effectiveness information system metrics, such as usability, customer satisfaction, conversion rates, that is how many people that we have a lead about or that visit our website are we actually converting into customers? What's our financial return on investment? So they're concerned with these effectiveness metrics. Now Chief Information Officer does all right as far as salary goes. This is from PayScale, which is a website that tries to track data about what the pay is for various positions. Average across the U.S. being about $155,000 a year with a high in the quarter million dollar range and a low in a $90,000 range. Now the institution where I teach at does have a chief information officer. His name is Gary Allen and he is not only responsible for one of the major campuses, the flagship campus, but also the entire system level as well. What's interesting about Mr. Allen and why I bring it up is his background is actually in veterinary medicine. So it illustrates something I want you to be clear about, and that is that the chief information officer role is not a role that has to be filled by somebody who knows about every little detail of technology or has come up through the ranks of looking at technology and um, from a technical background. Certainly veterinary medicine is technical, but it's a little bit different field. Another role I want to discuss is called the Chief Technology Officer. This person is really responsible for ensuring the throughput, speed, accuracy, availability, and reliability of information technology. So we'll define it as the Chief Technology Officer, sometimes known as the Chief Technical Officer, is an executive level position in a company or other entity whose occupation is focused on scientific and technological issues within an organization. This person is going to be concerned with efficiency information system metrics. So throughput, transaction speed, system availability. In other words, how fast are people able to access the resources they need and are those resources always available? Information accuracy, making sure that data that's coming into our systems is accurate and it doesn't get changed or altered while in those systems. What is our web traffic? What is our response time? So these are all efficiency metrics and this is where our CTO is going to be a little more concerned. The next role is the Chief Information Security Officer also sometimes uh, abbreviated just CSO, but either way you do it, the Chief Information Security Officer, CSO or CISO, is a senior level executive within an organization responsible for ensuring information assets and technologies are adequately protected. This can include physical protection as well as so-called cybersecurity. The Chief Privacy Officer is a relatively new role. This role is concerned mainly with making sure that employee as well as customer or user data is protected in terms of privacy laws, 
privacy policies and privacy regulations that a certain industry or company may come under. So let's define it. A Chief Privacy Officer, or CPO, is a corporate executive charged with developing and implementing policies designed to protect employee and customer data from unauthorized access. A Chief Privacy Officer may also be involved in helping to educate employees so that they are taking the right steps to protect the user data. For example, a teacher may be trained on FERPA regulations in order to make sure that that teacher understands that student data has to be considered confidential and to whom that student data can be shared. The chief data officer is a new role as well or a relatively new role, but it's one that we're going to hear of a lot in the coming years. A chief data officer is a corporate officer responsible for enterprise-wide governance and utilization of information as an asset via data processing, analysis, data mining, information trading, and other means. The reason that I say we're going to hear more about this is because this is actually defined in the General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR, that has been implemented in the European Union. Any company that collects data on European Union citizens has to comply with the General Data Protection Regulation, and that regulation specifically calls out this role and defines the responsibilities of the chief data officer in regards to that law. The chief knowledge officer is a role that you may hear about. It's somewhat rare for somebody to actually have this role, uh, at least in my experience. But it's basically an organizational leader responsible for managing the intellectual capital and the custodian of knowledge management practices within an organization. So trying to make sure that an organization is capturing the knowledge that its employees have and maintain that in a way so that when employees leave or when projects um, are starting up that we have some reference material to go back to and find out about how procedures were done in the past about what mistakes were made, what lessons were learned. All of these roles are bridging the gap between business personnel and IT personnel. So if you look at some of the skills that are necessary in these roles, the number one skill is the ability to communicate effectively. Second, strategic thinking and planning, understanding business processes and operations, negotiation, sales skills, and then we start to get into something technical. Thorough knowledge of technological options and technical proficiency. To test and reinforce your knowledge, please complete this short exercise. On the pages that you printed out, I want you to just draw a line from the hat with the acronym of the role over to the person that is playing that role in our organization based on the quote that's provided. You can go ahead and pause the video now and we'll compare in just a second when you've completed it. We have over 2,000 more students and 5,000 more devices on campus this semester. I have to make sure that the wireless network stays up and the MU servers can handle the load. Well this of course is the CTO, very concerned with our efficiency metrics. Another board of curators meeting next week. I need to generate a balance sheet and other reports so I can show all the curators where the money was spent. Well that of course is our CFO or Chief Financial Officer. We didn't really cover that but this is the person that is in charge of our finances for the organization and interestingly enough this is really where the CIO role started because in the late 90s a lot of the IT projects got so out of control in terms of budget that the CFO started taking control of those projects that eventually morphed into the CIO role. 
Off to another training session for faculty and staff about the university's FERPA policies. Faculty make the worst students, but what is the role that this person is playing? Well, they are filling the role of the chief privacy officer. We are losing all our IT folks to Carfax and Veterans United. We have to make sure that every change they make to the information systems is documented and we have an updated list of administration procedures. In this case, this person is fulfilling the role of a chief knowledge officer, trying to retain that knowledge within the organization. According to my logs, the MU firewall blocks over 3,000 attacks on our servers daily, but I'm more concerned about internal threats. I have to make sure that faculty stop writing their passwords on post-its and sticking it to their monitors. Well, that, of course, is the CSO or CISO, CISO role, uh, Chief Security Officer. University has some major strategic initiatives that are dependent on our information systems. I have to make sure we choose the right systems, software, and vendors if we're going to meet these goals for our students. Well, that, of course, is the CIO role. So very concerned with effectiveness metrics, how effective are our information systems in supporting the work and activity of our employees. There's two other support roles that I want to mention here. The first one is that of a help desk. So a help desk provides a single or multiple points of contact for users to gain assistance in troubleshooting, get answers to questions, and solve known problems. A help desk generally manages its requests through the use of software such as issue tracking systems. So when you call into a help desk, often what you'll do is you'll get level one support where they'll ask you very basic questions. You know, is your computer turned on? Do you have it configured right? Are you using the right program? What else is happening? And help you test things out. If it turns out you've got a more severe problem, it'll then escalate to tier two support or even tier three support. The last role I want to discuss is an system administrator or sysadmin. It's a person who's responsible for the upkeep configuration and reliable operation of computer systems, especially multi-user computer systems such as servers. So you'll often find people that specialize just in Windows servers or Linux servers or database servers and they're the sysadmin for that server. I hope this little video gave you some good idea of the roles that are played to support our information systems in organizations today.